Hello, friends. James Corbett here at CorbettReport.com with this week's edition of Propaganda Watch. I hope by now that you will have noticed that over the years, I have had a remarkably consistent message for my viewers and listeners. Perhaps you can do a little bit more due diligence and research for yourself before simply taking any of this advice at face value. And of course, I'll link the document talking about that, uh, that memorandum and the history of this so that you can read it for yourself. As always, as with everything, please go to the show notes. Many, many, many different references to what I've talked about here in the show notes. I hope you will go and look through it. But as you can tell, it takes a lot of research to actually cut through this BS and to find some of the ways that they trick you with these uh, various analyses. So I hope you will start to dedicate yourself to this. The show notes will have the links to everything I've talked about, as always. This is a story that is 97% fabrication and based on basically uh, the, the media's uh, belief that you are too stupid to go out and actually read any of this legislation for yourself or look into any of this yourself. I'll put the links in the description so that you can go and read it for yourself, and I heartily suggest that you do because this is an exceptionally interesting document to read. But I'm going to leave it there for today, asking you, as always, to do more research for yourself. You can use the show notes for today's episode as a starting point for that research. But there is much, much, much more to explore on this issue. Yes, research it for yourself. Go read the document for yourself or watch this interview for yourself. Hey, here it is in the show notes. I'll link it up so that it's very easy for you. Yes, I hope you will have noticed that I have consistently had that message since the very dawn of the Corbett Report. I, those are just a few scattered examples from the last several years. That montage could have been a hundred times longer if I really dug into the archives and started cutting clips, because I, I hope people realize that isn't just something that I'm saying for effect. That is part of the founding ethos of the Corbett Report. Go back and listen to the interviews I've done talking about the website and when and why and how I came to start it. I always talk about one of the things that really motivated me to do this was here we are in the internet age. I don't have to take someone else's word or some, some third party's interpretation of this or that document. No, I can go and see it for myself. Sometimes an actual facsimile of the actual document, an Operation Northwoods document or whatever it is, I can go read it for myself. And you should be similar motivated to do so. And the reason for that is manifold. One of the reasons is that I know from my own experience, it wasn't until I started researching things for myself and looking at source documents and trying to understand them in their original context that I really started to understand and put pieces together. It is an important part of, of understanding the world is not taking someone else's interpretation of something, but doing it for yourself. Also, that's like a muscle that you are flexing to use your rational critical faculties that is being drilled out of the population. Most of the time, the establishment media does not want you to look into things for yourself. Hey, CNN told you that it would be illegal to go and look at these WikiLeaks documents for yourself. We can do it because we're the press, but you guys can't do it. Of course, that was legally absolutely 100% wrong, but that is the establishment establishment media thinking on these things. Don't look at things for yourself. Don't think for yourself. We will do the thinking for you and tell you what to think. That is the exact opposite of what the Corbett Report is about and the exact opposite of what you should desire. You are a thinking, rational human being with your own ability to decide for yourself based on your own observation of original source documents or whatever the case may be. That is an important thing. And I stress this because, as I say, that is a critical faculty. It is like a muscle. It has to be flexed in order to grow. And they are trying to make that atrophy. They are trying to make the public turn their brains off. And I say that advisedly because of the article we're going to be examining today here on Propaganda Watch with a headline that has to be read to be believed. You must not do your own research when it comes to science. This coming from... Ethan Siegel, the Start With a Bang contributor for Forbes.com. And as always, of course, I will be consistent. And I will say the link, of course, to this article will be in the show notes. So please do go and read through this article for yourself. But with the big caveat, the big asterisk, do not satisfy Forbes.com by giving them your click. Absolutely do not. This is clickbait. It is designed to 
get you to click on it at least out of rage or curiosity in order to give them the clicks, in order to give them the ad and revenue and all of that. Do not satisfy that. I will link up the archive.is version of this so the click, the link does not go to Forbes.com. They do not get satisfied with the click. But again, of course, I will tell you to read this for yourself and come to your own conclusions, which is decidedly not what Ethan Siegel wants you to do. In this article, he starts by noting, research both sides and make up your own mind. It's simple, straightforward, common sense advice. And when it comes to issues like vaccinations, climate change, and the novel coronavirus SARS-CoV-2, it can be dangerous, destructive, and even deadly. The techniques that most of us use to navigate most of our decisions in life, gathering information, evaluating it based on what we know, and choosing a course of action, can lead to spectacular failures when it comes to a scientific matter. The reason is simple. Most of us, even those of us who are scientists ourselves, lack the relevant scientific expertise needed to adequately evaluate the research on our own. In our own fields, we are aware of the full suite of data, of how these puzzle pieces fit together and what the frontiers of our knowledge is. When laypersons espouse opinions on those matters, it's immediately clear to us where the gaps in their understanding are and where they've misled themselves in their reasoning. When they take up the arguments of a contrarian scientist, we recognize what they're overlooking, misinterpreting, or omitting. Unless we start valuing the actual expertise that legitimate experts have spent lifetimes developing, doing our own research could lead to immeasurable, unnecessary suffering. All right, let's stop there. So there are points that are made here which might sound reasonable, perhaps even rational. Well, yes, there there expertise and listen to the experts is, of course, something that we've talked about here on Propaganda Watch. Um, But there is such thing as some degree of at least familiarity with a subject and all of the myriad problems and details and things that come from a lifetime of study of a subject that are valuable and can add insight into an issue. And so someone coming in from the outside, yes, probably doesn't have a handle on a lot of those issues. But And let me just interject this but here, although we're going to continue reading through this article. But one of the things to consider is that person coming in from that outside perspective does bring with with them an entirely different perspective based on different experience, different understanding. They may see things in that problem that the experts are examining that they are not able to see themselves because they do not have the expertise of the person who is coming in from outside that field. That is why having outside perspectives can be valuable as a way of building knowledge even within a field of expertise, because otherwise it becomes a cloistered, hallowed hall that cannot be broken and leads to the development of uh, dogma, essentially. Um, Groupthink can very much take hold in those types of situations. So anyway, I'll just start by interjecting with that. But as I say, there are, there are merits to some of what's being said here, so let's see where they go with this. Now, where on earth is Ethan Siegel going to take this? What kinds of examples is he going to use to illustrate this point? Oh, that's right. Let's start with a simple low-stakes example. Fluoridated drinking water. On the one hand, fluoride is a simple ion that shows up in various concentrations, including naturally through calcium fluoride in bodies of water all across the world. When humans ingest too little of it, particularly at a young age, it leads to weakened tooth enamel and greater rates of cavities. When humans ingest too much of it, it leads to tooth discoloration and various severities of dental fluorosis. In extreme cases, significantly too much or too little fluoride can also lead to other problems such as osteoporosis with too little or skeletal fluorosis with too much. In most places in the U.S. and Canada, our drinking water is fluoridated at a specific level that's safe and effective for humans of all ages. In places like Colorado Springs, Colorado, significant amounts of fluoride are removed from the water, bringing the levels down to acceptable values. In other places like New York City, New York, fluoride is added to bring the levels up to acceptable values, etc., etc. Again, please do read this for yourself, but I think you understand the argument that's being made here. The the FDA or whichever regulatory body, the EPA, they, they have the exact right level for human consumption. 
human consumption. So the an infant and a 70 year old and everyone in between, male and female, absolutely everyone is the same and can be treated the same in this gigantic uncontrolled experiment with the entire population based on the, the exact right scientific level down to the decimal point of exactly how many parts per million of fluoride is good in the drinking water, right? Right? And of course, it's, it's med medical grade, finely controlled uh, uh, fluoride that's, that's surgically inserted into the, oh, wait, no, it's industrial waste that's dumped in the water and called a, a type of treatment? Uh, that seems strange. So the more you look into it, the more you realize, in fact, there are some very deep problems with this narrative that is being laid out. But interestingly enough, Ethan Siegel is relying on the average person out there who's only ever heard the one side of the story that this is some sort of very scientifically controlled, very precise science that, that there's no dispute about, well, the average layperson will probably just accept, okay, well, the experts know, and, and they, they have it all worked out. Wait, how about in countries like, like in Japan and other places that don't fluoridate the water supply? Isn't, why, why are they doing that if it's such an established science and so basic, so absolutely basic that the U.S. has it totally down, down to the decimal point, but other countries don't do this, and what's going on? Why? What's happening? Hmm, it's almost like there's actually more to this story, and the more you research for yourself, the more you might come across some of the intelligent scientific debate that is going on, and you might come across the Fluoride Action Network and Paul Conant and other people that I've talked to in the past. Please do search for fluoride in the Corbett Report search bar if you want, and you can find a lot more information on this subject, much more than the average layperson would ever even suspect is out there on this issue, because, again, if you read the controlled establishment media, you will only ever hear the perspective being propounded here by Ethan Siegel, and that is exactly what they want, so that there is no opposition, because as he goes on to point out, there are major cities in the world like Portland, Oregon, or Calgary, Alberta, where the public or city council, respectively, has voted to not add fluoride to their drinking water. Oh, <gasps> gas! Well, actually, there are entire countries that don't do this, but anyway... As I say, uh, he is essentially banking on the ignorance of the public and, and trying to shore that ignorance up. It's good that you do not look into this scientific debate so that the less you know about it, the more you can trust that the experts know what they are doing and that there's no swindle behind what's going on. The fact that this industrial waste was created into some sort of additive to the water supply so that they could actually sell their industrial waste as, as something to add to the water. Oh, isn't that great? Doesn't that ring any sort of alarm bells with anyone? Well, only if they research it for themselves, which is exactly why Ethan Siegel is telling you not to research it. And of course, of course, what does he go into after that? The climate change. And oh, well, we all know exactly what's happening with the climate because we have heard the experts say it. But if you do your own research and listen to some of these contrarians, you'll think that there's something to debate here. There is nothing to debate. Settled science. Well, I, I'm sure you understand what I think about that perspective, and I've done a lot of work on that issue. Um, but let's Let's get to what the real point of this is in the current political context, where we get down to the current crisis, where he notes that, quote, Right now, as we enter the month of August during the year 2020, it's a critical time for the United States and the world. We're in the midst of a global pandemic, as the novel coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 and the disease it causes in humans, COVID-19, has claimed the lives of more than two-thirds of a million people died of COVID or died with COVID? Anyway, in the United States alone, more than 150,000 have died, including in motorcycle accidents, with each new day adding an average of one, over 1,000 new deaths at present. Although there's still much to learn about the science of this, from how it spreads to who is most likely to spread it, to what the best treatments are, to the true infection rate, and so on. <laughs> you know, just a little bit of uncertainty about basically everything. Uh, well, there are certain things that we do know about. For example... Uh, the disease is airborne and easily spread from person-to-person -person contra contact. It's more easily spread in indoor settings. Older people are more likely to get critically ill and die from it. Staying home except for essential errands is absolutely crucial. And the interventions of wearing masks when you go out, not touching your mask once it's on, and remaining physically distant from others, not in your household, are all effective means of combating 
this scourge. But even those basic messages, for which there's virtually no scientific doubt surrounding them, <laughs> virtually no, what a wonderful weasel word that is, especially in the context of this, have sparked enormous amounts of controversy, despite the safety and efficacy of masks. Many are refusing to wear them, leading to spikes in new infections. Despite the importance of avoiding close contact with others not a part of your household, many people continue to visit friends and relatives, accelerating the spread of the disease. Despite the fact that over 150,000 Americans have already died from it, many continue to claim it's just like the flu, even though the last time 150,000 or more Americans died from the flu was 1918, the year of the infamous... Spanish flu, yes, of course. And then, of course, inevitably, it culminates in a shot at the anti-vaxxers. And what is the take-home message of all of this? There is no excuse with all the wonderful scientists and science communicators telling the truth about a whole slew of issues in our world for people to seek out only the opinions that confirm their own biases. The best scientists in the world, even the ones who hold contrarian beliefs of their own, all agree that we should base our policies on the scientific consensus that we've achieved. When that consensus changes, evolves, or moves forward because we've learned more than we previously knew, we should correct course to follow that novel path instead. But that requires a kind of transformation within yourself. It means that you need to be humble and admit that you yourself lack the necessary expertise to evaluate the science before you. It means that you need to be brave enough to turn to the consensus of scientific ex experts and ask legitimately what we know at the present stage. And it means you need to be open-minded enough to understand that your preconceptions are quite likely to be wrong in some, many, or possibly even all ways. If we listen to the science, we can attempt to take the best path possible forward through the, great, the greatest challenges facing modern society. We can choose to ignore it, but if we do, the consequences will only increase in severity. QED. Yes, indeed. Uh, right. So, again, I think you get the overall gist of this. I, again, I will let you go and read the entire article for yourself. I'll put the link in the show notes so you can do so. Do not give them the links. Go to archive.is. But... There it is, and I think we've encapsulated the argument. And as I say, some of it is reasonable and rational. Well, you do not know everything, and you don't know what you don't know, and you could be wrong, so you shouldn't come to try to... You shouldn't even try to do research for yourself. You shouldn't try to come to any opinions for yourself. Just trust the scientific consensus. And how do you know what that scientific consensus is, especially surrounding something that, as even Ethan Siegel here admits, is surrounded by all this uncertainty? How do we know what the scientific consensus is? Well, just listen to the health authorities. Just listen to the experts on this. And by that, of course, it means the right kind of health authorities, the ones that are propounded in the establishment media anyway, right? Not that other kind, which we're trying desperately to censor off of any and all mention of off of social media, right? I mean, isn't, isn't it interesting how this entire system works and is designed to work exactly as Ethan Siegel is propounding here? You are ignorant. You should revel in in that ignorance. You should not attempt to correct that ignorance. You shouldn't even listen to debates surrounding any of these scientific issues. Just find what the acceptable health authority line is on any particular thing, on any particular day, and follow it. Even when it turns out later on that, oh yeah, we were lying to you about that thing, but don't worry, it was all for your own good. Right now in the United States, people should not be walking around with masks. You're sure of it, because people are listening really no. closely to this. Right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. When you're in the middle of an outbreak, wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better, and it might even block a, a droplet. But it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. Do you now regret not advising people more forcefully to wear masks earlier? Okay, we're gonna play that game. Um, let me explain to you what happened back then. Should be a yes or a no. No, there's more than a yes or no by the tone of your question. I don't regret that because let me explain to you what happened. At that time, there was a paucity of equipment that our healthcare providers needed who put themselves daily in harm's way of taking care of people who are ill. We did not want to divert masks and PPE away from them to be used by the people. 
Okay, I've got, now that we have enough, we recommend. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Fauci, do protests increase the spread of the virus? Do protests increase the spread of the virus? Uh, I think I can make a general statement. Well, half a million protesters on June 6th alone, yeah. I'm just asking, that number of no. people, does yeah. it increase the spread of the virus? Cra crowding together, particularly when you're not wearing a mask, contributes to the spread of the virus. Should we limit the protesting? I, I'm not sure what you mean should, how do we say limit the protesting? Should government what? limit the protesting? I, I, I don't think that's relevant to... Well, to, you just said if it increases the spread of the virus, I'm just asking, should we limit it? Well, I'm, I'm not in a position to determine what the government can do in a forceful way. Well, you make all kinds of recommendations. You, no. you make comments on dating, on baseball, on everything no. you can imagine. I'm just asking you, you just said it, yeah. that protests increase the spread. No. I'm just asking you, should we try to limit the protests? No, I think I would leave that to people who have more of an, a, a position to do that. I can tell you. Government stopping people from going to church, Dr. Fauci? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's rank hypocrisy. What are you going to do? I, I have once again reached an impasse where I literally don't know what I can possibly say if you do not see, palpably feel, the hypocrisy involved here at the very least, if not the outright hatred of the public that is emanating from the experts like the Fauci's of the world and their mouthpieces like the Ethan Siegel's and others who are saying, follow the science, Follow the science, whatever the science says. And oh yeah, when the scientists later come out and admit they were lying to the public about what the science is, or at least say that they were lying to the public, because again, wh which one is the real lie? Uh, I mean, how are you going to evaluate that? You can't, so don't. Don't look into it. Don't use your own brain. Don't in any way look at research. Don't in any way try to come to your own conclusions. All you can do is follow the dictates of the health authorities when and if and as they state them. And as, as I say, I don't know what to say if you do not see that. And if you do not feel outraged by that, then there is nothing that I can say. I can't make some sort of rational, level-headed argument. Well, you see, the jurisprudence in the United States and many other countries relies on jury trials, which inherently uh, puts faith in the average portion of the public to be rational enough to evaluate competing evidence and come to a conclusion for themselves. I I don't have to make that kind of rational argument for this. Either you understand that you are being played for a chump and being told to be ignorant and to just trust authority, or there's no help for you if you do, if you do not see what is happening. And in some sense, perhaps this isn't fit fodder for propaganda watch, because propaganda, again, depending how broadly or narrowly you define it, is some attempt to persuade, convince, cajole, you into thinking, acting, or behaving in a certain way. But this isn't even that. It isn't some attempt to persuade you or to use some sort of mental trick on you. No, this is literally telling you that there will be literal dictators. That is the meaning of dictatorship, that someone will dictate. There will be a decree that you will have to follow, and you cannot question it. Well, at this point, they're coming out and saying, do not question it. Do not research for yourself. Do not think for yourself. Do not try to come to the bottom of any of these debates or to even look at the competing evidence don't think about it. You can only concentrate on the health authorities. And that is something that we've talked about here on Propaganda Watch before. Listen to the health authorities, whatever they say, whether it is wear masks or don't wear masks, whatever your particular locality health authority is telling you this particular week is what you need to abide by, even when it is directly contradictory. Yes, you should stay home and don't go to your grandma's funeral and you can't go to church, you can't go to work, you can't do this, you can't do that, you... You can't, but you can go out and protest. You can join a funeral for some big name person who has tens of thousands of people at their funeral. That's fine. But don't go to your grandma's funeral with 10 other people. That's a felony. I mean, it is, it is so in your face ridiculous that I think that is part of the point. This is literal dictatorship that they are steering the public into, where there will be people whose dictates become a sort of de facto law. This is medical martial law. It's, it's not being put in the public's face in that manner yet, but 
it's absolutely op-eds like this, clickbait nonsense like this from Forbes is part of the public conditioning to get the public on board with the new agenda, which is medical martial law and is dictatorship. So again, I, I, there's no rational argument to be made against this at this point if you do not see what is happening right now. And if you do not feel outraged that you are being told to not only be ignorant, but wallow in that ignorance and, and rejoice in that ignorance and simply listen to and do what you are told, if you are not outraged by that, you are forfeiting your humanity at this point and there is no hope left for you. So, this message, once again, is only going to fall on the ears of those with ears to hear at all. And uh, I don't know how many of you are out there anymore, but I trust that the people who are out there are on board with this message and do understand what I'm saying and the importance of it and why I constantly, constantly exhort people, go to the show notes, look at the links, go read it for yourself, go look at it for yourself, come to your own conclusion. Do not listen to me or anyone else's interpretation of this material. Come to your own conclusion. So uh, your own cognitive faculties, your own ability to reason and think for yourself is going to be more and more a prized possession that you must hang on to with all your might because at first they will try to convince you to give that up, but eventually they will come for the thought criminals and that is what is that is the dictatorship we are goose stepping into. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Propaganda Watch. I will be talking to you again shortly. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. <laughs>